Hey guys, Dr. Cassie, back again with you for a fantastic podcast with Dr. Dana Liska entitled, How to Win with Your Itchy Dog Patients, Meeting Owner Expectations and Practicing Best Medicine. I love this title. I love it because it and Dr. Liska's podcast capture what we're all trying to accomplish on a daily basis, namely meeting owner expectations while doing what's in our patient's best interest. Of course, this can be particularly challenging when it comes to itchy dogs. Practicing in Florida, we see pets presented with skin and ear problems at least daily, if not multiple times per day. And as Dr. Liska will discuss, so many times these pets and their owners are at their wits end just wanting some relief for their dog's constant maddening itch. Part of my typical approach is to ask owners to describe how itchy their dogs are on a scale of 1 to 10, but sometimes I wonder if I shouldn't be asking owners how they're doing on a scale of 1 to 10 from not concerned to losing their mind over watching their dogs scratch and chew at themselves all day long. In this podcast, Dr. Liska will walk us through the keys to success for itchy dogs and their owners, including providing effective, safe itch relief from the start to gain owner confidence and trust. Doing that provides a platform for a streamlined diagnostic approach and customized treatment that meets each pet and owner's needs. In particular, she'll discuss when and how to use Apoquel and Cytopoint to support these goals. Dr. Dana Liska is Senior Veterinary Specialist in Dermatology at Zoetis. She received her DVM from Kansas State University and did her residency in veterinary dermatology at the University of Florida. And you know I've got to say it. Go Gators! She also has a bachelor's degree in genetics from the University of Kansas. Now, one more thing before we jump in, I just want to clarify that this podcast is sponsored by Zoetis, who are the makers of treatments, including Apoquel and Cytopoint. So without further ado, let's jump into our podcast. Thank you so much for that introduction, Dr. Cassie. I really appreciate that you were able to make that connection with what you've experienced to what we're going to be talking about today. So let's just jump right in. Hello, Vetfolio listeners. I want you all to grab a pen and a scrap of paper, and I want you to write these four numbers down. 1, 3.3, 279, and 920. These four numbers will illustrate why you want to spend the next 20 minutes listening to this podcast. 1. Skin allergies are the number one reason for dogs to visit the veterinarian. 3.3 is the average number of visits that each new itchy dog will make to your clinic in a one-year time period. 279 is the average dollar amount of the invoice for a dermatology visit. 920 is the average dollar amount of the invoices for the entire year, and that is just for derm alone. It does not include preventative care visits or any other sick pet visits that itchy dog may need. So that's the why for you. I'm here to help you with the more important matter, best medicine for your itchy dog patients and delighting the pet owner by meeting their expectations. The first concept I want you to embrace is that allergic itch is urgent. At the end of this podcast, I'm going to give you a beyond easy call to action to illustrate the urgency of allergic dermatitis. Having myself lived with four atopic dogs, I can absolutely attest that these owners are truly on an emotional roller coaster. Here is what owners tell us. The scratching, the chewing, the licking, the rubbing is driving them crazy. They may feel tired because their dog is keeping them up at night. They may also feel frustrated sad. Sometimes they feel guilty, like they somehow gave their pet this disease. I've had clients tell me that they're embarrassed to be seen in public or even express disappointment or anger that the precious puppy they adopted has turned into this giant mess of itch and infection. And how are we supposed to understand the severity of what they are personally experiencing at home? How can we know that Toby, the sweet, gentle, handsome, seven-year-old yellow Labrador retriever who doesn't look at all like he has skin disease, in fact, rubs his face on the carpet for up to two hours every day. How can we know that Roscoe, the seven-month-old Staffordshire Terrier mix, who should be running and playing and going for walks with his people, is so miserable in his skin, he's wearing two e-collars, and his owner cannot even get his attention when she tries to physically interrupt him from using his front paws to scratch at his sock-covered hind paws. 
Now picture Toki, the 11 year old Chihuahua. She's a mere seven pounds. She's brown with tan eyebrows and a muzzle that's starting to turn gray. She's so sweet and she is the queen bee of the other pets in the household. She typically prances around as she walks. How can we know that she's hiding in her kennel because she's having an atopic flare and presumably doesn't feel well? And maybe it's not such a bad thing that she's hiding because she smells so bad, her people are reluctant to let her on the couch when they watch TV at night. Keep this in mind. When a pet owner calls to complain that their dog is itchy, they are asking you, please do something. Please help my dog. Think of it this way. Diagnosis begins with relief. We know through market research that 88% of pet owners use one or more over-the-counter medications before they ever bring their dog to the clinic for the first visit. So they have tried and they have failed already. Sometimes they have tried up to 15 over-the-counter therapies. The decision that you make on how to manage their pet's itch is crucial. Succeed here, delight the owner, and give them and their pet a great experience, and you will have gained their trust and their loyalty. One of my favorite pearls of practice to share regarding patient care is institute a standardized scale for tracking pruritus. After all, that is the reason the owner is calling the practice in the first place. But don't limit the pruritus scale to only using it for itchy dogs. Make this an open-ended question during the exam of every patient. It would only take seconds more to add the following request to every appointment. Mrs. Smith, using this standardized scale, please read from the bottom to the top and make a dash mark at your dog's current level of pruritus. Those words are so simple and so easy. And how many mildly pruritic dogs coming in for a preventative care visit could you identify and help with such a simple tool? And why not use the old, hey, tell me on a scale of one to 10, how would you use your dog? This is why, because people have different thresholds. How many times have you had two owners in the exam room who cannot agree on how itchy their dog is? One claims a four while the other claims a seven. Using that standardized scale puts everyone on the same playing field. When you gain their confidence and become a trusted partner, they will be more likely to follow your recommendations in the diagnostic workup. If you are unable to make that tangible difference for their pet, there may be doubt, there may be reluctance to accept future advice. They may look elsewhere for information or may even go to another veterinarian. And that is a lost opportunity for you and your practice. And it's not something you want to risk. So don't be afraid to connect with them. Show them your empathy. Ask them, how does dealing with your dog's skin and ear disease make you feel? So where am I going here? It's simple. My first line for dogs that I suspect may have allergic dermatitis for stopping the itch is Apoquel. Research has proven, and I have confidence from my clinical experience, that it will provide rapid and reliable itch relief in my allergic canine patients. The kind of relief that owners are expecting, the kind of relief that comes with minimal side effects in the short term. With Apoquel, you can expect only 2-3% to of dogs may experience vomiting or diarrhea, which in most cases resolves spontaneously. Interestingly, the incidence was no more than what was seen in placebo-treated dogs in controlled studies. When the pet owner knows you are committed to quickly and safely keeping their dog comfortable, you can start the diagnostic workup. Since this is a podcast, I cannot show you a visual aid. So I want you to grab that pen and that paper you used at the beginning of the podcast. I want you to draw five rings in a line from left to right, slightly separated across your paper and then draw a connecting line between each ring to tether them together. Inside the first ring, on the left, write, stop the itch. Inside the second ring, moving towards the right, write the words, rule out parasites. In the third, write, treat infections. In the fourth, write, conduct a food trial. And I'll add the caveat if the food trial is necessary. And finally, in that farthest ring to the right, you should write down the words, confirm atopic dermatitis. That right there is what we call the streamlined diagnostic approach to the itchy dog. And that diagnostic workup on the first visit may very well involve the first three rings. Stop the itch, rule out parasites, and treat skin infections if present. The diagnostic approach to the final two rings, they might start at the first visit also. You might know right away the dog needs a food trial because they're dealing with a non-seasonal dermatitis and pruritus. Or it might be obvious that there is a seasonal pattern and then you immediately know the dog has atopic dermatitis. In many cases, it might take a couple of visits to decide where you need to go with that patient. 
What I'm going to say here is don't waste time. Communicate the value of the diagnostic workup at every single appointment and get moving down the diagnostic pathway in a timely manner. From a publication in Javama by Co. et al., we know when discussing cost, pet owners focused on outcome. That is, they were focused on their pet's health. We also learned the value of the treatment is most important. So grab your pen and paper again. Write down the fraction eight-tenths. And below that, write seven times. From an AHA state of the industry fact sheet, we know that eight out of 10 owners would probably say yes to a tester treatment if the value of that tester treatment was explained. From a third publication in Javama by Kanji et al., we know owners are seven times more likely to follow a recommendation when it comes with a clear explanation. Let me give you an example. Here's an ambiguous recommendation. Mrs. Smith, I think we should do a cytology. It will cost $26. Is that okay with you? Here's the same idea, but presented clearly and concisely. Mrs. Smith, a cytology will help me specifically identify which infections your dog has. This way, I will choose medications that he truly needs and not just be simply guessing. This is the best for his health and for rapid resolution of his skin lesions. Here's another example I'd like to share. First, the ambiguous recommendation. We could do a food trial or I could send you to see the local veterinary dermatologist. Now a concise recommendation. Everything you tell me about your dog's history suggests he may have a food allergy. If that is the case, a food trial for up to eight weeks will show us that by simply addressing his diet, we can put a stop to the constant itching and ear infections. That would be an awesome outcome. And it is my personal opinion that it can be that simple. There doesn't have to be an apology that it's an eight-week test. There doesn't have to be an apology that it's an expensive food because it's a food that's going to give you valuable information as to whether that dog has a food allergy or not. Show them the value, make that concise recommendation, and they are seven times more likely to accept your recommendation. So people ask, with all these great therapies we have, what do we gain with the diagnostic workup? I will say this. You gain further trust and respect when we give clients the answers they want and need and deserve. Completing that diagnostic workup also gives us the ability to create a long-term plan individualized to each patient. And I'm sure you're sitting out there nodding your head when I would say you would never start an 11-year-old cat who is losing weight on insulin therapy for diabetes without a diagnostic workup first. And I will say dermatology is no different. That diagnostic workup is crucial. What do we stand to lose if we do not complete the diagnostic workup? A loved family member who goes from one itch crisis to the next and an owner who remains on the emotional roller coaster and likely goes looking for better options and answers from another veterinary practice. All right, so we'll bring it back to our five rings. You have stopped the itch with Apoquel. Ring two, rule out the parasites. Again, grab your pen, grab your pencil, and I want you to write these letters from left to right in all capital letters directly next to each other like you're writing one word. Here we go. I S O X A Z O L I N E. The isoxazolines. Dermatologists look at this case of therapy as revolutionary in the world of flea and tick control. At Zoetis, we are so excited about our recent launch of Semperica Trio. You'll recognize it. It's the all in one monthly chewable combo, Seroloner, Moxidectin, and Parental for heartworm disease, fleas, ticks roundworms, and hookworms. I'm aware of 11 publications, and no surprise, as the dermatologist, the flea and tick studies are the most interesting to me. In particular, a field study in which dogs with natural flea infections, just like the dogs who will be visiting your practice, showed substantial improvement in their clinical signs related to flea allergy dermatitis. I've seen a few flea allergy dermatitis pictures before and after starting Semperica Trio. There's a particular veterinarian who's really active on social media, and he shared those before and after pics, and they are certainly impressive. All right, let's move on down. Ring three, skin infections. One word I want to share with you here, and that is cytology. Do what you have to do. Bundle the cost into the exam. Bundle the cost into a tape scrape DTM. Charge separately, whatever works best for your practice. But it is the one diagnostic tool that I cannot live without as a derm on a day-to-day basis. You know us derms. You know we love topical therapy. So the next thing I want you to do is just write down 2 to 4% chlorhexidine for staph 
and for yeast. It can be a shampoo, it can be a spray, it can be a mousse. Collaborate with your client to make sure they can do topical therapy. And more importantly, will they do topical therapy? Like I can bathe my dog, but it doesn't mean I will bathe my dog. I think it's no sense in sending home a bottle of shampoo if it's just gonna sit on the shelf unused. Just like you worked with the owner to make sure they can and will do topical therapy, be sure to discuss the options for systemic antimicrobial therapy. It might be tablets, it might be capsules, it might be an injection. But remember, they are seven times more likely to follow your clear recommendation for best medicine if the value is explained. Ring four, food trials. Several publications over the past four years confirm that serum, saliva, and hair tests for food allergy are not reliable. The only way to do a food trial is to change the food. And people always ask, and my answer is no, there are no over-the-counter diets that I trust as a veterinary dermatologist. So people will then ask, what diet do I choose? My response is, is that history of the patient will determine if I'm going to go with a novel protein diet or a hydrolyzed protein diet. In the end, if it doesn't really matter if this is the very first food trial that's ever been done, then I'm going to most likely go with the most highly hydrolyzed protein diet available on the market. And to clarify, veterinary prescription only. Once you get to ring five and you've made the diagnosis of atopic dermatitis, your conversation with the owner might sound a little bit like this. Atopic dermatitis is a disease that we can manage, but we cannot cure. We still have great options to customize treatment for your dog's long-term anchor therapy. There are daily tabs like the Apoquel we have used to this point. It can absolutely be continued long-term for maintenance therapy. There are daily capsules like Atopica, or there is an injection called Cytopoint that provides relief for four to eight weeks. And we can also refer you to the dermatologist for allergy testing to start immunotherapy while we continue the anchor therapy that is simple, sustainable, and safe. Again, take the time as a team in your practice to consider what you deem to be the best medicine and make your strong recommendation to provide the owner with that clear direction they're looking for. The reason I use the word sustainable a few moments ago is because we're learning more about caregiver burden in the veterinary medical field. A publication in early 2019 in JAVIMA by Spitznagel et al. stated the following in relation to caregiver burden when caring for dogs with chronic disease. Quote, greater burden was significantly associated with the degree to which clients felt their daily routine was altered and with greater perception that rules and routines associated with patient management were challenging to follow. So this boils down to we don't want our rules of management to upset their client's routine. We really want to be collaborating with them to see what they are capable of starting and, and keeping up on a sustainable level for their dog. Until now, I have just focused on stopping the itch by starting with Apoquel. So people will ask, why might you start Cytopoint? There's five. The first is easy, a dog that's difficult to medicate. That could be a dog issue or that could be an owner compliance issue. Two, a dog that has comorbidities and is receiving any other therapy. Three, owners seeking a non-drug therapy since Cytopoint is a biologic. Four, Dogs of all ages, and especially those under one year of age, for which Apoquel would be considered off-label. And finally, five, dogs requiring lasting, lifelong disease management. So how to start a Cytopoint regimen? The expectation is as follows. The injection of Cytopoint you give in office will last between four and eight weeks. This is backed not only by Zoetis data, but also an independent study out of Colorado State University, published in the VetDerm Journal in December of 2018. Sousa et al. showed 80% of dogs received their cytopoint injections at a frequency between four and eight weeks. There is also data published in the April 2020 issue of Clinician's Brief that shows you should not give up on Cytopoint if you get a partial response to the first injection. A Zoetis-funded study followed 110 dogs under the care of veterinary dermatologists. These dogs received one, two, or three Cytopoint injections during a 90-day study. 93% of dogs collectively responded to one, two, or three injections given approximately 30 days apart. I encourage you to check out that publication. It's easy to read. It's full of useful information. And I know it would have changed the way I handled many of my cases when I was in practice. I have just a few final thoughts for communications that I think will help you. I've picked up a new rule from a couple of my colleagues. I've heard them say they use the 80-80 rule, that you should be able to manage 80% of a dog's itch 80% of the time. I think that's a fair estimate. 
Talk to your clients. Let them know that their dog skin condition will flare. If it's flea or food allergy or atopic dermatitis, it's not a matter of if it will flare. It's a matter of when it will flare. When the client calls your practice to say it, you can see me in my air quotes, it isn't working. It might be whatever their dog is currently taking for their skin disease. So when they call to say it isn't working, train your client service representatives to get those dogs scheduled in as soon as possible. Has there been exposure to fleas? Did the dog create its own food challenge by raiding the trash? Have pollen counts skyrocketed outside? And is there secondary infections that have developed for any of those reasons? If there's been exposure to flea food, pollen, infection, then it may look like it's not working, but it's likely helping. So don't stop that anchor therapy. Again, get them into the clinic, find the reason for the flare, address those issues, and get the dog back on track. All right, I said I was going to finish up, so here are my five parting statements. Today's pet is part of the family. Owners want what is best for their family member. Research has proven if they understand the value of a treatment, they are more likely to accept and not be as concerned about cost as you think. By developing relationships with owners, you become the trusted partner and you earn their loyalty by prescribing best medicine. I started the podcast with the statement, the itch of allergic dermatitis is urgent and challenge you to treat it as such. I would like to give you a super easy call to action, and here it is. When we're done, go to Google Images. Type in the two words, atopic dermatitis. When you type in atopic dermatitis to Google Images and you hit enter, sit and take a long look at the pictures that come up and tell me that you wouldn't feel desperately urgent to get in to see your doctor and gain relief with something that works fast, is highly effective, and is safe. Keep this in mind each time you're caring for one of your patients with allergic dermatitis. Thank you. Thank you so much for letting me spend this time and share this information with you. Thank you, Dr. Liska, for the fantastic pointers on safely and effectively treating these poor itchy critters. Once again, we want to provide the disclaimer that this podcast is sponsored by Zoetis, who are the makers of treatments, including Apoquil and Cytopoint. If you'd like to find out more about this and other podcasts, click on the Education tab on the Vetfolio website. As always, we'd love to hear your input on this session, as well as ideas for topics you'd like to hear from us in the future. Feel free to reach out to me at dvm at vetfolio.com. You can also visit my Facebook page at Dr. Cassie DVM, and you can find me on LinkedIn. And remember, if one animal is better off because of you today, it's a great day. Important safety information for Apoquil. Do not use Apoquil, oslotinib tablet, in dogs less than 12 months of age or those with serious infections. Apoquil may increase the chances of developing serious infections and may cause existing parasitic infestations or pre-existing cancers to get worse. Apoquil has not been tested in dogs receiving some medications, including some commonly used to treat skin conditions, such as corticosteroids and cyclosporin. Do not use in breeding, pregnant, or lactating dogs. Most common side effects are vomiting and diarrhea. Apoquil has been used safely with many common medications, including parasiticides, antibiotics, and vaccines. Apoquil Indications control of pruritus, itching, associated with allergic dermatitis, and control of atopic dermatitis in dogs at least 12 months of age. For more information, please see the full prescribing information at apoquil.com. Cytopoint Indications Cytopoint has been shown to be effective for the treatment of dogs against allergic dermatitis and atopic dermatitis. Important safety information for Simperica Trio. Use with caution in dogs with a history of seizures. Simperica trio contains Sarlaner, a member of the isoxazoline class which has been associated with neurologic adverse reactions including tremors, ataxia, and seizures in dogs with or without a history of neurologic disorders. The safe use of Simperica trio has not been evaluated in breeding, pregnant, or lactating dogs. The most frequently reported adverse reactions in clinical trials were vomiting and diarrhea. For more information, see the full prescribing information. Simperica Trio Indications Simperica Trio is indicated for the prevention of heartworm disease caused by Dirofilaria imidis and for the treatment and control of roundworm, immature adult and adult Toxicara canis, and adult Toxicaris leonina, and adult hookworm, and Cyclostoma caninum, and Uncinarius stenocephala infections. 
Symperica trio kills adult fleas, Tenocephalides felis, and is indicated for the treatment and prevention of flea infestations and the treatment and control of tick infestations with Amblyoma americanum, Lone Star Tick, Amblyoma maculatum, Gulf Coast Tick, Dermacenter variabilis, American Dog Tick, Ixodes scapularis, Black Legged Tick, and Ripocephalus sanguineus, Brown Dog Tick, for one month in dogs and puppies eight weeks of age and older and weighing 2.8 pounds or greater. Zoetis is dedicated to changing the way we approach canine pruritus to protect the bonds that matter most. Visit scienceofstrongerbonds.com for more information and resources.